My name is Rika Doss and I'm back again with another video. So today, um, today's a really chilled out day. I've got a lot of like technical work um, that I need to get out of the way. But in regards to meetings, I've got a fairly free day, which I'm very happy about. Um, so today what I'm going to be uh, doing and focusing on is uh, AWS CDK. So I've got a solution that I've written up in CDK version 1. Uh, that I now need to uh, just kind of like upgrade it for the new uh, version. Sorry, that I've done in version one for the new CDK version two uh, that has just recently come out a couple of months ago um, in AWS. So I'm going to take you guys through it. I'm going to further explain what CDK is, what SDK is, how you can use them, why they're good, good, bad, whatever, whatever, you know. Uh, so yeah, stay tuned. Right, so I think it's quite important for us to just quickly go through what is AWS CDK. So CDK is short for AWS Cloud Development Kit, and essentially it's just a powerful open source tool um, that's provided by Amazon Web Services. And what it does, it enables developers to be able to define the cloud infrastructure using familiar programming languages such as uh, React, Python, TypeScript, C Sharp, C++. Um, instead of having to manually configure those resources. So it essentially lets you write code that generates your um, infrastructure as code, which then takes us to what IAC is, right? Um, so there are other, other um, IAC providers. So you've got like Terraform, there's AWS CloudFormation, there is CDK. There are different ways that you can essentially begin to develop um, IAC solutions. So why is IAC or infrastructure as code so important for us DevOps engineers? Um, so as a DevOps engineer, you are responsible for managing and automating uh, the development, deployment, operations of your application and services. And what CDK lets you do is that essentially empowers you to provide um, a higher level of, of abstraction, um, meaning that you are able to you know, define and manage your infrastructures better, making it easier for you to adopt um, infrastructure's code principles. And it actually just lets you focus on just writing code and reduces the time and effort you spend on having to like manually um, provision and handle the configurations. So I want to talk through some of the key differences between CDK version 1 and CDK version 2. Uh, so to start with, uh, version 2 has introduced something called tree shaking and it's a technique that optimizes the output of your CDK app by removing unused code during the build process. Um, so actually this results in a smaller deployment packages and faster execution time. The second one is that they've um, simplified constructs um, by introducing um, a simplified construct library. Uh, so it makes it easier to create custom constructs and share them within the community. And what this does is it's meant to promote uh, reusability and collaboration amongst developers. Um, the third one would probably be a smaller footprint. So uh, CDK version 2 aims to reduce the size of the framework uh, by removing a lot of dependencies and unnecessary code. And that kind of links back into tree shaking. And then finally, uh, with the programming languages support, CDK version 1 offered support for Python, Java, C Sharp, TypeScript. Uh, but with version 2, it now focuses primarily on Python and TypeScript. Um, so what it does is it provides a more focused development experience and just better language specific tooling. So this is what begins happening once you synthesize. So there is CDK synth uh, and what that does is synthesizes and prints the CloudFormation template uh, for one or more specified uh, stacks. What I've now done is done CDK bootstrap and what that's going to do is deploys the CDK tools, uh, toolkit staging. Uh, stack and it's just essentially seeing if it's been bootstrap. Uh, we have got successful here So I'm going to actually check out that 
um, AWS account and seeing what results I've got. And then following that, I've now just uh, CDK deployed it. Uh, so I will work on these new warnings that I've got over here. But I've decided to deploy my whole stack, um, as we can see. And right now it's going into region US East 1. Um, so we should have it building soon. So I'll keep you posted. So here we are now, as we can see, it is currently just uh, implementing all of the resource changes and on cloud formation, we're actually able to see um, our stack being built. So as we can see, we've got our VPC subnet that's been created, updated and vice versa. And what this is, this is actually a nested um, stack. Uh, so I will actually show you. This um, is for the Kubernetes uh, part of it, and this is kind of just the, the main bit of it. So we're going to let this finish up and I'll get back to you. Uh, so what I'm showing you here now is um, a rollback, a rollback uh, has been in process. And if we actually check the reason and the event, um, I think it's actually to do with just the unsupported Kubernetes version. Uh, so as you can see here, it's an unsupported Kubernetes version. Um, and what I essentially just need to do now is to update. So you can see it's just showing all the rollback. It's deleting every resources that it created. Uh, yeah, so like I mentioned, ow. <laughs> uh, so yeah, like I mentioned, I've got a rollback and it's to do with the Kubernetes version. Uh, so I'm now really reviewing the code here. And what I need to do is go <clears throat> into my layoffs-requirement.txt uh, file and check the Kubernetes version. So the Kubernetes version right now that I've got on this CDK um, is 21.7.0. So I'm now just checking what, what, what is the current um, EKS uh, version, that, sorry, what is the current Kubernetes version that actually needs to be used? So, just... so why is this important for DevOps engineers? So CDK version two, like I mentioned, introduced tree shaking and smaller footprints. What that does it, it is it contributes to a faster execution time and reduces resource consumption. So this leads to much more efficient deployments. Uh, the second thing um, is future-proofing. By adopting the new CDK version two, you're ready and more aligned for the latest advancements and best practices in infrastructure as code. And it's also great to always stay up to date with the latest versions of CDK so you can leverage these new features. And then finally is that it's more language specific. Uh, so that means it's more targeted and optimized experience for developers um, and allowing them to kind of leverage the, the new features and tooling effectively.